We have a big, big trip today. A trip to Melbourne Museum, which is the largest museum in the Southern Hemisphere. We were super excited, so we woke up real early in the morning and we plan to get there before 11 a.m. The museum is located right behind the Royal Exhibition Building, so we also took some time to take pictures around the area. After completing the ticket check, we took our first steps into this amazing museum. Creating us from the left side is a huge blue whale skeleton. We then move on to see the dinosaur walk. The galleries also comprise a parade of other prehistoric animals along with these massive creatures. Other than the detailed information about the animals, we can also have some interactive experiences like feeling these giza stones. Next, we made our way to Dynamic Earth, or known as the Rock Room, where you are introduced to how the Earth was formed, and all types of rocks as well as the origins. Oh my god, this looks like a one big broccoli! These are minerals that emit light of different colors when exposed to ultraviolet light and are known as fluorescents.
Then we navigate to the insects exhibit, and the interesting thing is that not all of them are pinned against the wall. Some insects are alive for us to see too. In Vietnam, glass jars containing creatures like these are mostly drinkable because they are soaked in alcohol and believed to be good for health. The kids love this. We can pop our head inside the sphere to see the ants from the closest distance. This is a cross section of the maze that bull ants build themselves inside the ground. After that, we head up to the 600 million years gallery where we can find those fossils from sea to land that tell the stories about the origin of life in Australia. These treasures of the natural world is the highlight of today's trip. Not because we paid extra for it, but also due to the fact that this exhibition came all the way from London's Natural History Museum showcasing some of the oldest, rarest treasures that have contributed to the course of scientific history. Aside from displaying the animal's skeleton, there is also a small film illustrating the movement of the animal itself vividly. In 1911, a piece of Martian meteorite fell to Earth, which contains traces of clay. Since clay needs water to form and water is essential for life, could it be life on Mars? We are all got thirsty by this time, so we grab some drinks at the museum's cafe. The drinks are okay, nothing special. After the break, we enter the forest gallery, a large open gallery filled with cool temperate rainforest plants and the smell of misty air and damp earth.
Then we go to the Melbourne Gallery, which is filled with icons from a city past to the present and also unfolds the history of Melbourne with tales. This is our last exhibition to visit today. We celebrate the history, culture, and achievements of Victoria's Aboriginal people. The gift shop is our last stop at the Melbourne Museum and it's time to move on to our next destination. It took us about half an hour to get back to Melbourne Central and now we're heading to a Thai restaurant for dinner.
The atmosphere here is lively with loud music playing in the background. I can literally feel my heart beating fast and my stomach rumbling over the food too. We order a pasi yu, which is a Thai stir-fried rice noodles with beef, a green curry chicken, paired with sticky rice and jasmine rice, and finish off with sticky rice and mango for dessert. The chicken is perfectly cooked, the curry is so flavorful and profound, I quite like it. This dish really blew my mind because this is exactly the taste of the dish I ate when I was a kid. The serving is kind of small but the harmony of the smokiness flavor, the savory and a little bit of sweetness make the dish absolutely phenomenal. Next up, we're sailing through the sea of flavors and beauty of this dessert. Sweet mangoes goes so well with sticky rice served with lightly salted coconut milk. I highly recommend it. <laughs> 